afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to PBA at Noon. I'm Paul Benwell, and I'm joined by my colleague, Sophie Caesar. AIS Resources Limited, which is AIS on the Venture Exchange, is focused on precious metal, precious and base metal exploration. AIS boasts a team of experienced mining and geological professionals with a long track record of success in manganese and lithium resource exploration and production, and also the capital markets. Through their Peruvian manganese ore projects, they have, a, they have strong potential for short-term cash flow. Joining us today is AIS, from AIS, excuse me, is Martin Element, Chairman of the Board, and we're trying to get Philip Thomas, the President and CEO uh, from Australia, to log on. But if not, uh, for the moment, Martin, uh, go ahead. Well, I think we should add that it's two or three o'clock in the morning or something for uh... Philip, and because of all the activity on AIS, we've been going, um, Philip is probably more than me, we've been going, you know, 18, 16, 18 hours a day because of all the activity. And um, I do apologize to everybody. Um, I certainly can, can relay what we're doing and what, what we're about to do more, but I won't be able to ask too much of the technical side. But what I'd like to say is if at the end of the questions and answers, I will take people's names or, or, or that specifically want to ask something technical and I will have Philip Thomas uh, get back, back get back to them on that so um, I, I think that um, where we should start is is right now with what's what's happening and give you a quick uh, synopsis of the company um, we went out looking for lithium in um, Argentina extensively uh, we drilled on uh, two or three occasions and different locations we found lithium on every time, but we couldn't find the PPMs. We could only get it up around 100, which has to be significantly more than that. So we, we abandoned, uh, after uh, uh, working in Argentina, we abandoned that particular scenario, although we've still got tremendous technical people. Philip himself is one of the most knowledgeable people in lithium in the world, and we certainly are, are retaining representation in Argentina. And uh, I, I personally think we're going to see a lot more of lithium, but we'll leave that alone this morning. We then went to manganese and we were successful in doing a shipment, a small shipment. Unfortunately though, uh, so many people in the world, we got caught in the COVID um, situation with the manganese situation out of Peru. Um, and I can say without getting into too much detail on that this morning, that we, um, we are uh, being pursued uh, quite aggressively on the manganese front um, and I'm very conscious of confusing the audience with what I'm about to talk about. Um, but we're being asked to do some um, significant business on the manganese. And I think we'll be coming back to that in the next probably three or four weeks. But as I say, um, and it'll be a nice situation to, to be dealing with. However, this morning is this morning and we are dealing with gold, very much so. Philip Thomas lives in, in Melbourne. He's one of the 12 men in Australia that's an appraiser for resource properties. And I must add, is very held in very high esteem in Australia because of his uh, job that he, he does. Um, he uh, uh, um, is also very, very conscious, being in his backyard, of the Fosterville and the New South Wales Lachlan Fold area. Um, we, we have been working extensively now for about eight weeks on looking for properties in that area, given, given it's, it's such a hot area of the world. And we've come up with this first property, which we feel very strongly about, and it's been announced. <clears throat> it's in the Lachlan Fold area in New South Wales, and it's, it's, it's a longer drive from Melbourne. Um, the, the Fosterville area is only about a two hour drive. This is more like a five or six hour drive. But it's, the, it's one of those uh, old mining areas, and we did have a, a very small patch around the mining area. And then uh, the fellow who was the vendor of the property went out and staked another 56 square kilometers with two, uh, three old uh, mining deposits on it. And um, it's the man who did the vending that is very, very key to this whole story because he, um, um, he, he is uh, by name is, uh, is, is De Dennis Walsh. Dennis Walsh is the, um, Dennis Walsh is the, uh, um, he is the main, um, he is the senior mining consulting geologist to the actual Fosterville mine, which I think is very, very, uh, very important. 
And I think that um, that is a, a major factor. And he has come up, and he's an old friend of Philip's. He came up with this property. It isn't in the Fosterville area, but it's in a very hot area of Australia. And uh, he was gracious enough to let us be the uh, recipients of that property. Uh, but, uh, he's getting close to retirement, and he's already asked, you know, could he be involved possibly in some capacity? Well, of course he can, being his position with the actual Fosterville mine did just under a million ounces last year of gold. So um, the exciting thing is he's the vendor. So Philip was out um, on the property uh, last week. And um, uh, well, actually, it wasn't last week. He was out on the property on Monday this week. What am I saying? So we have another news release related to that visit. But it, this area is very, very, very um, strong uh, for, for old gold mines. And some of the, the assays that are coming off our news release that we uh, put out the uh, day before yesterday uh, refer to that. And I think that it's going to be a very, very exciting time because <clears throat> not only do we have a, a really nice situation with the old workings of the, of the mine that we're involved with, we also have another three gold mine, old gold mines on that 56 square kilometers. And as I say, Philip was visiting some of those on Monday. And from that, we're going to having to put out another news release, I think as early as Friday or Monday uh, next week. And, um, you know, it, it's a very exciting time. We've also been working very, very hard on um, a property which is actually in what they call the Fosterville Triangle. Um, it is a, a, perhaps a, a bigger undertaking in some ways of what we've just announced. We are hoping to be in a position um, to have that uh, signed up and looked after. And we think that'll be probably another week to 10 days. But part of signing that up is, is Philip is very concerned as he wants to go down the shaft to inspect the other prospect that we're diligently working on in the, in the Fosterville area. And uh, because he's an um, essential service, even though Melbourne is and that part of the world is pretty well locked down, he's allowed to move around. Uh, so he will be going down the shaft, which will be Monday our time, Tuesday his time. So um, I expect to see more and more um, news releases, a lot of news releases coming out of AIS in the coming um, weeks. And it'll be a very busy time for us. Hello? Excellent. Thank you, Martin. Um, did you want to go over any of the other properties in the deck? Possibly I have the deck up here. I'd be happy no, to I know, share. I know, I know. It should have been the news release, really, rather than the deck, because this, this whole thing has happened so fast, we haven't had a chance to go back to the deck and really readdress the deck. Um, you know, my guy who, who put the news release out worked right through the night to get that up and running, and that's on the site. The deck is, is obviously is relevant because of our background. <clears throat> the deck is under, I should have really taken it down and put set under construction, but that probably would look awful as well. But the deck will be um, sorted out in the next, you know, I, I, I'm not an internet man myself and I always think, oh, these things take, you know, a few hours, we'll take this and we'll take that down and we'll do this and we'll do that. Well, of course, anybody that knows anything about the internet and decks and things, it, it isn't that easy, but we will, get it done in the next three or four days, and we'll get it uh, sorted out. In so much as we're still active in Peru, uh, as I say, we're being pursued aggressively for supply of, um, uh, of manganese. We're also being um, asked to supply some manganese out of another part of the world. Uh, we've kept our, we've kept our, our involvement in the, uh, on the lithium, which a lot of the market players are still, and I think the the longer term, the, the longer ball players are beginning to think again about lithium. There's some transactions beginning up and we're very, very close and on top of that. In fact, Philip Thomas chaired a 750 attended Zoom call uh, two or three days ago uh, for three or four hours. He was the chairman of, and it was just on lithium. So Philip is, uh, is one of the most knowledgeable people in the world on lithium. And uh, even though we're not active in lithium, we do have the personnel and the experience to be able to quickly adjust back into that. I'm just focusing on gold right now. The company is focusing on gold, but we are certainly not leaving the, the, the aspect of lithium. And we're certainly 
being that we're being bugged about doing some shipments in manganese, we're not turning them away either. But we are really, really focusing in a big way on the um, on the gold aspect, given what's going on. And uh, just minutes before I came on air, I see we're about to go through nineteen hundred dollars, which is just mind blowing. And uh, I think that um, you know it, the gold, of my own opinion, is it has to pull back a little bit somewhere here. But as a friend of mine, and I will quote, I will quote who said it to me. It was Peter Brown, who I admire as one of the most knowledgeable men in looking for resource stocks, although he said he's never really been a gold bug. As he said, he's been in the business 55 years. Martin, he said, I have never, ever seen a gold market like this in my 55 years in the business. And uh, there's a man who, would, uh, who I admire and like, and, and he, uh, he certainly knows, and I think he's absolutely right. So um, as much as I, I hope I'm not jumping all over the place here, as much as I respect lithium, I drive a Nissan Leaf. I've had it for five years or four years. I absolutely adore it. And, I, I, and I'm about to upgrade a little bit. But, you know, so lithium is going to be huge and there's not going to be enough to go around when it hits in a year's time, two years time. So we're very aware of that. And manganese is part of that lithium story, although obviously it's being used a lot in uh, iron ore. And, and people are telling me that iron ore is the biggest performing uh, situation of any of these resources in the last little while. And of course, there's a lot of manganese used on that. But uh, please, if I can't say it enough to the investors and everybody that's on the call here, we are very, very focused on gold, but we're keeping an eye on those other metals as we've got the experience on board. We have the experience around the world, but we're given what's going on with gold, we're focusing on gold. And this property that was just taken on but not a lot of money can go into production very quickly as well. So, um, so we're very excited about what's happening here, you know? So Martin, actually um, to touch on um, the lithium, we had a question from one of our attendees who asked, um, what do you think about Alpha Lithium Corp brine project in Argentina, uh, 54 million Canadian market cap pre-drilling he believes? Uh, well, I, I asked Philip about that, and <laughs> don't have me shot at dawn, because Philip came back because it was such a huge performing stock uh, a few, you know, about a week ago, I saw, you know, he said they've got a lot of, um, I'm going to hope I don't live to regret this, if I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's, it's the same stock, I'm sure it is, he said they've got a lot of problems with, um, he didn't say mud, he said clay, and he said, you know, they're going to have a lot of trouble getting the actual lithium out, quote, unquote. And um, if you, you know, if that person, if you could forward that email to me, I'll have Philip talk to them directly. But I, I think that's what he said. Philip is a no-nonsense, black and white kind of guy. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't um, cajole. He doesn't uh, make you feel good. If he, if he doesn't like something, he says it. I remember when he, some of the biggest producing lithium mines and some of the biggest brokerage firms in the world were saying, well, the stock's going to go from three to six or even. And he said, absolutely not. They're having trouble at the site. And, and um, he knew, and of course, the stock did not only did not go to six, it went down to two or something. It was about two Christmases ago now. We all have, doc we also have a, 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 on our very close to us, is Dr. Carlos, who's an Argentinian who lives in Melbourne as well. And he's one of the most knowledgeable people in, um, in lithium as well. And, and between, Philip and him, they're, they're, they're very, very clever men. But they've been working on some uh, ways of... Lithium is a, a very tricky situation, although it's like drilling for oil. When you find it, that's great. But when you find it, then you've got to have um, the right mix because if there's too much uh, 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 manganese in there, you're not going to get it out. If there's too much clays, if there's, there's a lot of interference. So um, it's a very tricky, very, very tricky product to produce a lot trickier than I think people realize and I didn't realize that when we first got in there but I do now and I I can see it's a, it's you have to have the perfect scenario and the purer the lithium of course the better but um, my my I'm hopefully uh, the gentleman who asked the question isn't too uh, upset and um, I, I think he should be put in touch directly with Philip um, later today. Perfect, yeah, I'll take note of that. Um, there's also another question. Uh, where is the mag manganese interest coming from? China, question mark? Um, yes, but it's coming from other areas as well. And 
but I stress to the investors that are in AIS, because when we, we began to have a nice little run on the manganese, you know, market cap was doubling and tripling kind of thing and looked really good. And then the COVID, and, uh, no, the, the Chinese, to put it mildly, Asian Chinese people are much, a huge majority of them are some of the trickiest people to deal with on the planet. And I think a, a smile is coming on a lot of places on this faces on this Zoom call right now. That's, that is an understatement. So what Philip has done and what I've done and what I've said uh, with Philip is that we will not, we will not ship one ton of manganese unless it is a, a FOB, freight on board. In other words, you know, that's a big word in our world, in the stock world, unless it's a, a, all, it won't, we won't make as much money, but it'll be a guaranteed shipment. In other words, if we're shipping it, we won't ship it unless we're paid before it gets to China. So we're taking all kinds of precautions on that side of things. Um, the, the only other thing I can add is that we, um, on the shipment side, the manganese is being, um, is, some of it is being sought out of some countries in Africa here as well. It's not just Peru. And um, Philip's background was he was a commodity trader with Macquarie for many, many years and um, at, at quite a high level. In fact, I don't think it was fully Macquarie. It was Macquarie and somebody else in McDoodle there in, um, in Australia. So he, he actually knows the trading side as well as the, ge the geography side as well. So, um, you know, he... Uh, we won't be doing any shipments. Yes, it is the Chinese. We won't be doing any shipments unless it's a, I'm using that word, which I say, respect the word, unless it's a guaranteed trade. We're not gonna ship anything unless it's paid for up front. So that's what we're gonna do. As I say, we won't make as much money, but it'll still be a nice, the sorts of sizes that we're talking uh, would, 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 get, would gain us in that, um, not huge money, but it would you know, give us, um, I think, um, nice revenue on a monthly basis, which, which would net out really nicely for a little company like, um, like, like AIS. Martin, there's a couple of questions that I've got for you. Uh, what's the cash position of AIS right now? As of this morning, about 500. Uh, and are you in a money raise or you know, obviously? We just, I'm we're sorry. just completing a, a, a raise and, um, we, um, the company, um, like so many companies, uh, two or three months ago was getting extremely tight because we had some bills that were occurring from our uh, escapades in, um, in, uh, uh, um, Argentina. And, um, we also had a debtor in the company, which I'd like to come back to for a moment on this call. Um, however, large that the, um, I'll come back to the raise in a minute. Large that the debts were, um, when this company, when I first got involved with this company, there was no resource business. There was nothing going on four or five years ago. And um, I was able to secure <clears throat> a position in a company called Buddha, B-U-D-A, Buddha Juice. Because AIS, Allied Investment Services, is actually um, an investment issuer, which for the listeners, uh, the viewers, Investment issuer can, can do anything it wants. It's like a mini, mini microscopic merchant bank. It doesn't have to go to the exchange if it wants to buy a juice company or it wants to buy a, uh, a marijuana company or it wants to get, it doesn't have to. And um, well, there was nothing going on in the resource business. So I had a contact in the States for organic glass bottle cold press juice. And we invested in Buddha juice. I tried to raise a, uh, a substantial amount of money. I wasn't successful. The markets were dreadful, but I did raise enough to 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 buy in about four and a half percent of Buddha juice. <clears throat> it cost us about half a million dollars, and over the last four years, the company has has grown substantially, and we just increased uh, the book value of Buddha juice to a million two on our books, because that's what the directors and the founders just did a takedown of the of money owed. The company is running profitable. It did 20 million last year. It's running on pace for 60 to $80 million this year. So I have a feeling that million two is going to be worth an awful lot more. And it, it, it's a strange thing that most people wouldn't even know it's in the company. But I'll come back to the money situation. We were able to use that to offset 
uh, the biggest part of any debt um, <clears throat> in the company, we used the Buddha juice. However, we still needed to raise money. So what myself and my um, CEO and my CFO, the three of us, we sold a lot of stock to, to keep the company more than going. We paid off a tremendous amount of the bills, all the working capital. And we've just announced, and we got permission from the exchange because of COVID to do a, a two cent placement to recover our monies when we sold all this stock. And alongside that, we also placed over $400,000 worth of um, <clears throat> two very people that have supported us through and through uh, as well at two, two cents, which comes to a big print of about 37 million shares, but still only, we still only will have 120 million shares out. And we have an asset that we've just announced, of course, that um, <clears throat> is going to uh, significantly and already has affected the valuation and will continue to, especially if we do with the next gold deal in, um, in, um, in Fosterville that we're hoping to complete here in the next 10, maybe sooner days to get that done as well. So touching on uh, that, Martin, touching on that, uh, what is, what's the cost of the Aussie acquisition going to be? Has that been ironed out? Is that uh, open for discussion? It's net, eventually, it's going to net out at the three quarters of a million mark, but it's, it's, really, it's really well staged over um, a period of time. And for now, the, the, what the, you know, what's good for us is uh, it's $10,000 Aussie this month, it's 10000 next month, and it's 10000 the month after. Well, I fully expect us to do another financing probably in the next two or three weeks. But it'll be done going into a positive situation, hopefully, with um, people beginning to understand what we've just uh, done and understanding the other assets that are on the, um, the acreage that we've just taken on, plus the new deal that we're working on. So I think we're going to need more money, but it's probably going to be at a, at a higher price is what we're, what we're thinking, substantially higher price. Right. To continue along that vein, no pun intended, uh, is there any historical data on the Aussie project, is there infrastructure Oodles. in place? Oodles, oodles and boodles, too much. And that's what I think between what we've got, what we've reported already, and what we're going to be reporting early next week, because Philip was actually with Dennis Walsh uh, early, you know, for 24 hours on Monday this week. Uh, that's what they're writing up now. And Walsh, of course, <clears throat> as you probably the listeners know, he was heading up the... Uh, the discovery, and, and I'm sure you know Fossilville has almost doubled its, its uh, production here in the last 12 months, and he was in charge of all, well, one of the main guys in charge, if not the guy, for the exploration side of looking for more resource. So this property that we've just taken on, you like that expression, you know, this is his back pocket property. He's also retiring from his position with Fosterville. And so, uh, so that's why that He's not going to get in too much stick, I think, for doing what he's done with us, little tiny little company like AIS. Um, and uh, so his knowledge of this area and what we're doing and what he's put in here, he's, it, he didn't just find this thing. He's, he, he's been working on it for many years. So there's, there's, there's a lot of information. And Philip is, because of his qualifications, is having to go through that. So there will be lots and lots more coming back to this current property that we've just put in, but a good question on your part. So yes, there's a tremendous amount of information. And between and, Philip and, and Dennis, they are gleaning that information. And just to follow up on that, you, you said earlier that you could probably get this project up and running and uh, into production. So therefore, you obviously have a general idea of what the CapEx would be. And is there any time frame? I'm not going to hold you to any time frames. Is there any <laughs> time you, frame you, or CapEx? You, you're being naughty to me because you know you're getting right into Philip Thomas's. Well, I mean, if, then, I, then we can ask these questions of him later, and we can do a little webinar with him and get him to answer well, them. My, then we can post yeah, them. yeah. My my wife did teach me something. My first wife did teach me something. When you don't know, Martin, say you don't know. Don't waffle and dance Perfect. on the head of a pin. So I do know. I have an idea. It's but that's fine. Let's much. keep it. Let's keep it to uh, to Philip. It's then. not going to be. It's not. But it's not going to be twelve months, two years. It's going to be more like three months, six months, and a lot of it's going to be dependent on money. It's going to be a short lifespan, not, it's there, it's ready, it can be, it can be brought up to surface it. Uh, uh, the rough numbers are three to four million a year, and that's just what we know about now. Uh, but of course, it could be unbelievably more substantial than them. 
in Australia and South Africa, I mean, I've been in the business a long time, but I've just learned that we call them vein systems. When you walk the property in Canada, you've seen vein systems and quite often they come to surface and people walk for, you know, a kilometer or two kilometers of vein. In South Africa and in Australia, they call them reefs. So when Philip was down on this 56 square kilometers just on Monday, uh, I'm not saying anything irregular here, but there appears to be lots of reefs on those on both properties. So a lot of work to be done and a lot of evaluation to be done. But I think it's going to be a without it's going to be a very exciting time for a little company like little cap ca company like AIS. Okay. Then we'll let's get back to some basic questions. Uh, who are the principal shareholders of AIS? Um, Philip Thomas owns 12 million shares. Um, I uh, uh, own, uh, well, I'm currently be owning about 7 million. Uh, my CFO owns uh, probably three or 4 million. Um, and then we have some institutions uh, over in London, uh, very ex -hedge fund, hedge fund manager, actually lives in France. He, he has a big position. The lead guy on a company called Nubian, NBR, uh, Nubian, Nubian took a property on about eight weeks, 10 weeks ago now. It was eight cents. It had a little bit less shares out than what we have. And they took on, Nubian is almost a blueprint to what we have, although Philip will tell you ours is better, but that's an obvious statement. Nubian, he vended, it was a, it's a Vancouver listed company. Um, it was a friend of mine who very much helped finance the whole thing. He's a hedge fund manager out of, uh, Perth, Australia. His name is Campbell Smythe. He runs the Clarendon Fund, a lot of his own money and investors fund. And uh, there's a whole story attached to that Nubian property, but we won't, we won't go there now. And uh, he took that on. He vended it in at eight cents to Nubian. Two days later, it was 21 cents. Two days later, he did um, about a week later, he c completed a million seven on that deal, Nubian. And um, then he announced a bigger holding of property actually in the Fosterville area, which is something, something that we're diligently working on at the moment, as it happens. And by that time, the Nubian had been up to 35 cents. Then they announced that it went to 31. They halted it. They put the Fosterville in. And last time I looked, it was 40, 41. It could be higher now. So um, the uh, Nubian story, if you want to do some work on that, you'll see it's a very similar Although uh, I think ours potentially, of course, I'm biased as well, has an awful lot more <clears throat> potential upside, although I'm not that familiar with the Fosterville result, uh, but it was in the southern part, I think, of the Fosterville, uh, the South Fosterville, that's caused an awful lot of interest from investors, of course. So, um, yeah, there's, 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 a, there's, a, there's some good analogies there of what's going on, but... Um, there's something else I wanted to bring up, but we can do it at the end. If, let me know when we're getting near we the have, end. We have one more question, and we're and we're just we'll wrap it up after that. Uh, it came in. Sorry to be sorry, but to be clear, your holding in Buddha Juice is worth how much currently? Which 1.2, but that was on 20 million in revenue last year, and um, you know I. I when, when we've always had it, and then when I saw the two insiders that were owed money themselves from the project. They, they took, you know, they took their 900 grand that they were owed and they, they took it down in shares. I thought, ah, there's the signal that that's the low on, on, on the valuation because they want to get position. So we, we asked, you know, we went along with that same valuation and <clears throat> that's where we came up with a million two. Now, bearing in mind, they're probably going to get three to four times the revenue. They're running profitably as we speak. They're a private company. Um, I think there's a good possibility without exaggeration and an embellishment of getting myself in any trouble. I wouldn't be at all to surprised <clears throat> to see that Buddha juice uh, holding become worth two, three million dollars in the next 12 months. And I don't think I'm going to live to regret that statement. It'll be, and of course it is looking at potentially going public itself. So um, it's out of Dallas, Texas. Uh, the, the main shareholder there is Brian, 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 Brian. I can't remember, he, he, he was an outside investor. He was the largest packer of cut fruit and vegetable, organic and non-organic in North America. And he had a company that just recently sold uh, for into the billions of dollars. And of course, now he's got time on his hands. He's come back to this uh, 
uh, Buddha juice as a project, and that's why they're quadrupling the size of the kitchens and everything else. So it's a it's a very interesting. Now, as far as assets in the company, there's another really interesting asset I think that's going to take on a lot of meaning as we go forward. As part of our escapades in Argentina, um, a company that we put our own money in and then we went to collect it back off the public company and they were in no position to pay us <clears throat> is called MGX Resources. So for the people that really get in there and get digging, they'll see that we own uh, three, just over 3.7 million shares of MGX, call letters XMG. And it's run by a very successful promoter. He's had his, uh, he's had his uh, issues with one thing and another, with proxy battles and everything else. But he, is a, he, had, he had MGX over the last 18 months, two years, up to two, 280 a share. He's got a little bit more shares up, but not that much more. And those shares were issued at seven and a half cents, Paul. So um, on, um, they were sitting like at four and a half, five for the longest time. And then um, two or three days ago, they went six, seven cents. And then they put out the assays on this VC property that they're working on. Um, and they were, they, were, uh, they, were, they were bulk sample assays. They weren't drilling. <clears throat> And uh, they were as high as one ounce silver and eleven or whatever it was uh, zinc and a very very rich resources. I straight they were bulk. The gold has not been reported yet, but the stock traded up to fifteen cents a uh, day before yesterday. And you know, um, and I think it's just getting started. I'm not here to promote MGX. I just think that um, it's going to be very very interesting. Our shares are not tradable until the fifteenth of September, and um, I think the timing could be perfect, of course. And it might be one of those situations um, that we'll be glad that we're, we weren't able to trade. I must tell you as, as a individual and, and my life in the business has been 30 years, but you know, when it took a run up on 5 million shares two days ago, up to 15 cents, yes. If my shares, if those 3.7 were tradable, absolutely I probably would have sold half a million or more of the shares on the 15 cent range. I mean, I'd be lying if I said otherwise, but you know, maybe, by the 15th of September, I'll be glad that I wasn't able to sell those shares because who knows <laughs> where, you know, so there's a nice asset there that could be worth millions of dollars in the coming weeks. And I think a lot of our investors will start to watch MGX. And if it goes to 30 or 40 cents, which I think it has every possibility that it could, I will put a news release out. Uh, we will put a news release out to, to bring it to the investor's attention. And I checked with the legal side and they said, no, there'd be nothing wrong in doing that because AIS, because of its uh, investment issuer, it's allowed to, um, to hold stocks anyway, and sure. it's allowed to hold stock positions. So there you go. So there's another little tidbit there that's going to be more than a tidbit, I think, as we go forward, Paul. All right. Well, Marty, we're going to wrap it up. And I suggest to anybody that's still listening in, if you have any questions, please email them to either uh, Sophie or myself, and we can get them back to you, uh, Martin, and, and, or get them to Philip and have them addressed. Thanks very much for your time today. It's unfortunate um, that we couldn't get. Uh, yeah, well, I think we should do a top up and where maybe, would you be sending this? Is this going to be in a form that we can send it around to people? Oh yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're recording this. So it'll be on a YouTube uh, site of ours. Our YouTube channel. And yeah. um, yes, so they'll be able to watch it. And we'll get Philip to add to it, but get him to do it. He'll probably destroy my whole half hour, but you know, it'll be worthwhile. To listen well, to we'll do 10 so minutes with him, Marty, and then we'll condense you down to 10 and you'll have 20. How's that? Same Perfect. Thank you, Thank you so Thank you, much, Martin. Martin. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thanks Thank for everybody you. that attended today. Appreciate it. Take care, everyone. Be okay. safe. God bless. God bless.